Introducing Okuyama, easy to build base for weekly wipes, perfect for 4 to 5 players, a dedicated trio or a lazy 6 man, featuring a spacious starter, dependable open core and a wide gap shooting floor. First, I'll show you the 8 rocket externals. There are 3 in total, all with the same upkeep. Of course, all are disconnectable, which I'll show later in the build. Enter through one of 3 gatehouses, each with peaks looking back into the compound, and turret pods with drop boxes in the roof. As you can see, there's plenty of space in here, all the deployables you need to get you through the wipe, all guarded by up to 9 turrets. Enter the base through one of three entrances. Access the core by jumping up the chute and dropping down here. This spacious starter has plenty of loot space. It can even be built from just a 2x1. Here's the main TC, which can fit around a day of materials in. Jumping up to the second floor, we have the open core, with space for up to 25 large boxes, beds and a level 3 workbench. This area is highly defendable, with ramp peaks looking down into it, protected by 6 turrets, 3 of which are located behind the ramps so they can't easily be destroyed. Exit the open core on either side, and use the chute to jump up to the next floor with the shooting floor peak on the left. On this floor, there's space for up to six beds, complete with three lockets and three batteries. Here, you can see the excellent angles the ramp peaks give you to defend the open core. Running outside, we have the wide gap shooting floor, with plenty of peaks overlooking the compound and surrounding area. If anyone manages to get on your roof, use these peak ups to take them down. There are also breach peaks underneath, where you can guard any holes made in the side of your base in an online. Running back over to the chute, there are even more peaks onto the shooting floor and the roof. Up on the roof, you can see there's an exit on each side with access to all floors below for great mobility. When you go offline, you can store your best loot in these vending machine bunkers. They can only be accessed by placing a triangle roof. If raiders want the loot, they need to destroy the HQM wall with 8C4. Destroying the vending machine will despawn the loot inside. Lastly, here's the build cost and upkeep of the base in its final form. Begin by securing the area with a 2x1. This can be very handy if you're playing on wipe day, as whichever member of your team gets the build spot first can start. Just make sure the airlock is on the right, like so, otherwise you'll confuse the rest of the build. As always, remember to lock your main TC, otherwise raiders will be able to grief your base. In this tutorial, I'll be using final grade materials throughout, so just upgrade when you can. You can place a triangle shelf in the starter by building a foundation, a half wall and a triangle here. When you have more resources, expand the starter like so. Use ramps as honeycomb so no one can enter the base if they blow in from the back. All the ramps need to be metal when the base is finished. I don't know why I only upgraded the right ones to stone. Now 
Now you can expand the starter again by adding a couple more squares. Don't add this shelf to the jump up yet until you've got the garage door. You can use furnaces or a workbench or something. The stone ramp underneath is to make the boxes below easier to access. Now finish the entrance. Put a double door on this side with a metal wall on the right and a stone wall on the left. I left it stone as it needs to be upgraded and rotated later. The frame for this single door and the ceiling need to be kept wood so we can remove them later. For easy access, put three triangles on each side with a triangle roof as a jump up. Just remember to leave the triangle roof a twig, obviously not HQM. If you don't want to make the starter HQM yet, and you want to make it a bit stronger, you can add honeycomb around the TC here. Obviously you'll still need to upgrade the roof as you can't add honeycomb to it. To confuse raiders, I recommend adding this all around the base. Next we're going to build our external TCs and the compound. Build up by three squares, upgrade the last one and remove the first two. For the TC, build up by four triangles, a square, and then place three triangles for the external TC housing. You must put two half walls here for the disconnecting mechanism to work. Next, connect this square to the TC with a series of frames. Now, if your main TC gets destroyed in a raid, you'll need to disconnect all three externals before you can replace it. To do this, place down a foundation and a roof like so which will change the stability of the frames. Once you replace the TC, replace the frames. Now to expand the gatehouse. Put a triangle on each side and surround with windows and doors. Then put a row of half walls on the front and build the turret pods. These half walls can stay wood, but I'd make sure the hard side is facing in. To place the boxes and turrets, I recommend using a ladder. Obviously you can do this later if you want. After that, repeat this process on the other two sides of the base. Now the gatehouses are complete, we can seal in the compound. For this, you're going to need 15 wood walls. With the ones either side of the gatehouse, make sure the first two logs are glitching in it.
Now line one up in the centre here against the honeycomb on the base. Remember to leave a big enough gap on either side for another wall. When the compound is complete, put metal barricades on top of the gatehouses. Before placing down your large furnaces, I recommend building the wide gap foundations to make sure you can still build them later and the furnaces don't get in the way. After that, you can remove these foundations and build them later. Now we're going to build the chute for the first entrance. Definitely use an armoured door here as soon as you can. Now extend the chute up by another floor. Remember to build a jump up here to the next floor. It's important to make sure the garage doors are facing the same way so they can't be splashed. Now you can remove this single door from the ceiling with just a couple of machetes. Upgrade this wall to metal and rotate it. Then extend all the walls by one floor. Now put a half wall and a garage door on top of here. And lastly, complete the entrance to the core with another ceiling here. Now to build the chutes on the other two sides. They're exactly the same, but I'll show them anyway. After that, expand the honeycomb by two floors on each side. Then put two more walls above each chute. Next, fill in the honeycomb on all three sides, with a dividing wall in between. Then put half walls all around the central triangle. If you prefer, you can cover the centre one too, or put furnaces there. It's up to you. If you want to put furnaces, make sure the frame is twig and upgrade it afterwards. 
can be a bit tricky to fit three furnaces in here. If you can't, just try again. After that, complete the loop rooms. Build a wall frame, a ceiling, and place shelves inside. Before you place the shelves, remember to put a ramp underneath. The ramp just makes it easier to access the boxes at the bottom. You can actually fit another box underneath if you don't use the ramp. Also, if you have boxes on the lower floor, you won't be able to place the ramp, so you have to remove those first. Make sure these back walls are HQM to increase the raid cost through the doors. When all the loot rooms are complete, finish the entrances like so. On two of the entrances, put a shelf here with a ramp on top. Again, the ramp just makes it easier to access the boxes. You can fit more storage on there if you don't use the ramp. Now the open core is complete, add carriage doors. Your level 3 will go here. To seal in the roof, place a floor on the left and then the ramp on the right. Place the frame first before the ramp. Now the open core is sealed, add triangles to the tops of the honeycomb. After that, expand all the chutes. Remember to put a half wall and a window here for the shooting floor peak. Now do this again on the other two sides of the base. When all the shoots are complete, it's important to build this wall with two triangles on top first. This will make sure the triangles are facing the correct way to make it easier to place the vending machines on them. Then add honeycomb either side of the walls. After that, extend the chutes up to the fourth floor. Put the turret pod here with the window peak on top. The low wall acts as another peak onto the shooting floor. Put a full wall here, a triangle, and then a garage door to seal in the chute. Now repeat this step on the other two sides of the base.
Now all three shoots are complete, we can seal in the roof. Either side of each wall here, put a locker and a battery. Put a code lock on the locker and an embrasure so you can still access it, but raiders need to destroy the embrasure to get the loot. After that, divide each bedroom and peak with the wall and garage doors. For the turrets, make sure they're placed as far left as possible to get the best angles. And for the ones underneath, make sure they're placed as far right. Now the base is secure, start building the wide gap shooting floor. Place a twig square and two triangles, raising the last one. Then build all the wall frames up by two floors. Jump and place a triangle here. Don't worry about upgrading it yet. We can do it later. Repeat this step on the other three sides of the base. From the gatehouses, build a hexing of triangles towards the base like so. Then build a triangle either side, twig square, and then another triangle, removing the square. Then join all the foundations together with two layers of wall frames. Repeat this step again on the other three sides of the base. From the roof, drop down onto the triangle that we placed earlier. Then extend the wall frames up, build a floor, low wall, and the windows. Place another floor here, on the roof, and then the single door for the roof peak up. Place two small boxes down here, so you can crouch for better aim. After this part is complete, repeat this step again on the other two sides of the base. Next, extend all the wall frames up by one floor. Build floors as you go to make it easier. Do this again all around the base. Then attach windows to every wide gap frame. Put doors either side of the exit to partition off the shooting floor. and then seal in the roof. Repeat this all around the base and the shooting floor should look like this.
Lastly, you could put boxes here to crouch on and beds for respawns. Now finally we're going to finish the roof. Extend the chutes and build more doors. Put a half wall here for the turret pod. Then do this again on the other two chutes. After that, build the roof defences. To place this roof, build a twig floor first and then remove it afterwards. Put windows on either side with a box underneath to crouch on. Repeat this step on the two sides of the base. From on top of the peacup, place two normal rooms, either side. Then build another turret pod on top of the peacup. And again, repeat this on the other sides. You can place the wind turbines on top of the peacups. Build it by three wall frames and place two triangles on top. You can remove the triangles after placing the wind turbine and it will balance in place. I didn't do it here as there's a bug on this server which will destroy the wind turbine if you do that. For this last part, we're going to build the vending machine bunkers. If you place these triangles correctly, this should be easy. Usually we place the wall first and then the vending machine, but we don't have space to do that. So to place the vending machine first before the wall, I'll grade the triangle to metal then count 9 dots on the metal triangle, then place the vending machine. If you're worried about doing this, try it on a build server first. If you place the vending machine too close, you won't be able to place the wall. If it's too far away, raiders might be able to loot the vending machine. When you're happy with that, place the wall and upgrade to HQM. Do this again on the other two sides of the base. Well done, you've completed the base. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments, join my Discord if you need any help, and follow me on Twitch if you want to see some shenanigans. Maybe? Yeah, cheers.